Lord, I thank you today that on this Friday afternoon we get to celebrate two amazing individuals coming together as one. We thank you for Kyle. We thank you for Julia. We thank you for their lives up to this point. And we thank you, Lord, that from this day forward, they get to live their lives together with their best friend. We thank you that you're the author of this. And we ask for your presence in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So who gives this woman to this man? If it's done God's way. And I thought that really, it just rings true in my heart, specifically for the two of you. It's is that I see two individuals that want to do it God's way. Uh, not just our way, not, not just man's way, but God's way. And when we do things God's way, there's a blessing that comes with it. And so today, I've just been praying for you guys for this day. And there's a couple things specifically that I want to share with the two of you that I believe will be marks of your marriage, okay? So, let me start here. A couple marks, okay? This is not going to be a 50-minute sermon like you're used to me preaching, okay? We're just gonna, I'm talking to you guys about you and what I believe God is bringing together here today. I believe, number one, is, is that your marriage is going to be built on the rock, and the rock is Jesus Christ. Psalm 27, verse 1 says this, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? So, so here's what's great. Is the two of you coming together and being a husband and wife, from this day forward, you have someone to walk through seasons of fear and trepidation. There are going to be things that you both face individually that's a bit scary. But here, from this day forward, you're going to have a husband and a wife to be able to say, speak a better word. Like, I believe in you. You can do this. I'm standing in your court, and I, my mind will not be changed. Ecclesiastes 4.12 speaks of a three-corded strand that's not quickly broken, right? You can see it in your mind. One piece of the cord, one piece of the cord. And Jesus is that third piece of that cord that actually holds a lot of weight. I believe that your marriage will be built on the rock. Number two, I believe that you're, you, the two of you together, even as, as individuals, there's a humility about you that I have always enjoyed. There's, there's an inquisitiveness about you, Kyle, that you research and you dig into things and you ask questions and you don't settle for superficial answers and... Julia, I just, whenever I'm around you, it's like you're a sponge and you're just soaking things in. And I think at the root of that is humility. And there's something about humility that just attracts the favor of God. And in fact, the Bible says, happy are the humble. It puts it this way, happy are those that are poor in spirit. Happy are those that are meek, like supreme power under control. That's, that's what's really what's going on. I mean, you're a big man with a soft heart. And you don't see that oftentimes. You see big men, strong guys, but their hearts are hard and bitter and angry. You've got a soft heart. And the both of you together, the humility I think is going to mark. The third thing I want you to know is I think your love for others over time is just going to keep drawing people. You see, even here in this wedding, what's interesting is this. Is, is that as you continue to be married, you are going to shine bright. And people even in this wedding are going to pay attention and they will know, I can go to that couple when I need help. I, 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 when my life starts to go sideways, I know a couple that actually are, are seeking to live with their whole heart in love with Jesus. 
and make him the three quarters strand. So, so people have probably come to you at this point, but I think in the, in the years ahead, you're gonna have many people coming into your living room and maybe even saying, what did you do? Help me here, because I believe that you're gonna be drawing people, not only to yourselves, but also to the Lord. John 13 says is that, um, by all this, people will know that you are my disciples if you love each other. Okay, you guys love each other well. You love other people well. That's why you have so many people here at this wedding. But, but it's going to be an evangelistic tool that other people may not even right now, currently in this wedding, they may not know Jesus, but they can see the life change in the two of you, which shows Jesus is real and alive. And they'll come and ask you questions, which I think is an amazing thing. The next thing is this, is you're really faithful. For, you're, you are faithful to other people and approachable. Um, I, I think that anyone on the planet can come and approach the two of you because of that humility. I ran into this sign. It says this, wake up, be thankful, be approachable, complain less and smile. And I thought, man, that, and that, that is a, just, that's a great statement right there. Be approachable, complain less, smile, enjoy life. I think that marks the two of you. And, and also what I would say is, is that you two complement each other well. Now, Julia, when you were running around making plays, make this beautiful wedding happen, Kyle and I, we were just kind of bantering back and forth about how you both complement each other. I mean, it's a really beautiful, you know, there's this old song artist, Paula Abdul, that said opposites attract, right? It's real. I mean, she actually was speaking truth. That, maybe that one time in her life. I don't know. But, but the two of you really complement each other well. I mean, by the sounds of it, he wants to be 15 minutes early to everything. And you're like, hey, can we just be on time, right? <laughs> And, you know, and, and, and he might be a realist, you know, but maybe a pessimist is what other people would call it, right? And you're an optimist. There's this beautiful compliment that you two of you are bringing together that you'll balance each other. And what's going to happen is you're going to smile more throughout life. You're going to enjoy life more, right? And, and Julie, you might end up showing up to something five minutes early or ten minutes early. Who knows, you know? It's, it's, you compliment each other well in that way. You know, and I would say that that you, Kyle, your your emotions are gonna continue to be more and more unlocked, right? And Julia, he's gonna be your strong tower, just stabilizing and, and helping in the process. And the last thing that I would say about marks of your marriage is you guys were created for community. You know, I think all marriages are, but there's just something special about the two of you living in community. You know, some people, when they get married, they think it's me and my husband and my wife against the world. Don't think that way. I don't think that's how you guys think. Plant your marriage in community. And other people that have the same values of you, that it will thrive. Oftentimes, you will be defined by the company you keep, right? And so it's important to, to know to have community. Now here, those are the marks, I think, of your marriage. But let me give you a few exhortations. Okay? They're short. I'll keep it short for military man. If there's only three, okay? There's only three, okay? Number one is this, is I would say focus on building unity. Unity is never a, a stagnant reality. It's an ongoing pursuit. My wife and I, we've been married 23 years, and we're still building unity and talking and conversing and, hey, what do you think about this? What does the Bible have to say about this? And, and, and let that be your first uh, voice into something. I have actually a list of questions that I'm going to read. Okay? Practically, here's a great way to consider building unity. Number one, ask each other this question. What brought you joy this week? Right? So you sit down for a cup of coffee on a Saturday morning, and you look at Julia. Julia, what, what brought you joy this week? Right? Or the next question is, what was something hard this week? This is, you're just, what's happening is you're intentionally investing in each other. Another question is, what's one specific thing I can do for you this week? Now, that's the home run. Don't ask it if you don't plan on doing something with that one, right? Right? But what, what's something that I can do for you to bless you, right? Um, how can I pray for you this week? What, what is it that's going on practically, internally, in your mind? Uh, another, another one is, is there anything that's gone unsaid? Convictions, confessions, or unresolved hurt. I Meaning it just gives us time to say, I unintentionally hurt you this week and I had no idea. I'm sorry, please forgive me. Right? Is it's, these are questions that are really good. And the last question is, what's a dream, desire, um, that, that's been on the forefront of your mind this week? 
Like, what are you dreaming about? Which one of you are more visionary? Which one of you dream more? Definitely, yeah, okay. So this might be a great way for you to verbalize, just I'm dreaming, and it's for you to hear what's going on inside of Julia's heart. So, so here's my exhortation, focus on building unity. The second thing what I'd say is lovingly compromise. Lovingly compromise, okay? You've been doing, I've been seeing the both of you do this, but I don't even know if you know that in 2005, the Guinness Book of World Records said that Percy and Florence Aerosmith held two records. Okay, here are their two records. The longest marriage of a living couple, 80 years, and having the largest married couple's aggregate age of 205 years. Okay? So, when you, you come across a couple like that, you ask some questions. So, both Mr. and Mrs. Aerosmith have since died, but they left good advice for those who want to have a lasting marriage. So, they asked Florence first, what was the, what's the key to a lasting marriage? And she said this, quote, you must never go to sleep, bad friends. If you've had a quarrel, you make it up. Never be afraid to say I'm sorry. Good counsel. So they asked Percy, the husband, he had a slightly more humorous advice. He said this, he said the secret to his long marriage was just simply two words. Yes, dear. I mean, that's it. Just, <laughs> yes, dear. And you did this last night at the rehearsal. Yes, dear. And I thought, this man is ready to get married in the name of Jesus. So way to go. Way to lovingly compromise. Way to lovingly compromise. And the last exhortation is this. What we're doing now is laugh together. Listen, there's going to be, there's going to be great times. There's going to be hard times. There's going to be celebratory times. And then there's going to be adversity. There's going to be trials. Laugh in the midst of it. Learn to laugh in the face of it. Because knowing this... If God be for you, who could be against you? You have one to lean into. You have a rock to build your marriage on. And so you're not doing this alone. And you have a church community and family that are with you. Okay? That I ran into this quote of a couple that had been married 32 years. Uh, the wife said this. Always find things to laugh about. Laugh together. Times can be tough. Tragedy happens in all families. Things will go wrong. But if you find ways to laugh about it. You'll form a special bond and can overcome just about anything. So the last thing I'm going to leave with you before we do your vows is a marriage verse. I just was praying specifically, is there a Bible verse for specifically you two to, to hang somewhere? And here's what I believe is one of the key ones. Is that Psalms 27 verse 13. It says this. Love this one. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. What has been has, is in the past. What is ahead is a brand new day for the two of you. And that's what we get to celebrate today. Amen? Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for both Kyle and Julia. And I thank you, Lord, that you have got great things in store for them. And so as we come into the vows, as they say I do to one another before you and before us, Lord, may it be binding in their heart in the joy-filled seasons and the adverse seasons, that these words would be a declaration that would bind their souls together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I invite you to hand your bouquet off. Face one another for a time of our vows. Here we go. Kyle, if you will, repeat after me. I, Kyle, take you to Leah. Before God and these witnesses, to be my wedded wife. I do promise to love, honor, and cherish you. I do promise to love, honor, and cherish you. To be faithful to you. In plenty and in want. In joy and in sorrow. In sickness and in health. I promise to be your friend. Helpmate and companion. And to love you as Christ loves the church. I promise to be honest with you. To be understanding and patient. And to be sensitive to your needs. I promise to seek your highest good. And to help you become a greater woman of God. I promise to keep Christ. In the center of our marriage and family. I promise to live with you, love only you, and 
until the Lord calls one or both of us into his presence. Julia, your turn. Nice and slow. Here we go. I, Julia, take you, Kyle. Before God and these witnesses, to be my wedded husband, I do promise to love, honor, and cherish you. Uh, and cherish you. I promise to be faithful to you in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health. I promise to be your friend. Helping and companion, and to love you as Christ loves the church. I promise to be honest with you, to be understanding and patient, and to be sensitive to your needs. I promise to seek your highest good, and to help you become a greater man of God. And I promise to keep Christ in the center of our marriage and family. I promise to live with you and love only you until the Lord calls one or both of us into his presence.
Therefore, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the church, and in accordance with the law of God and the sovereign state of Washington, I now pronounce you husband and wife. May God bless you and keep you in his peace and joy. What God has joined together, let not man separate. Kyle, you may kiss your bride. shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Family and friends, I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Kyle and Jalea Carlston. Thank <laughs> you. 